Captain Merriweather. It doesn't get much better than this. Here she is. Oh, how good. So the starter batteries are dead. We can fix it? Uh, yeah, I just hope the house batteries are good enough to start the engine. The engine needs cold cranking amps. Yes, I was just about to say this myself. The uh, cold cranking amps. Good afternoon. Uh, Isabel is unfortunately feeling extremely sick this afternoon. She's come down with the flu. Um, I am going to do a little mission in to the island here in Makimu. Um, we're slowly running out of coconuts and before we go to the next atoll called Fakarava, I'd like to stock up on coconuts because I believe Fakarava is quite um, populated and everybody will own their coconuts and their coconut trees. But here in Makimo, it's still quite deserted, so I believe that I can go to shore and just grab as many coconuts as I want and nobody's going to bother me. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to take you guys with me. Come along. Okay, so I've just come to this first island and um, at the moment all I can see is pretty bare coconut trees. They might have done a harvest here already recently. The key is to find them with water in them. No, dry as. Merryweather, Pura Vida, palm trees, beautiful water. Ah, oh, it doesn't get much better than this. So I've just come uh, about four or five nautical miles up the coast and I've come to a different island and I'm seeing a lot more coconuts here. So I'm going to go around and see if I can find any. The ones I'm looking for have water in them. If you can shake a coconut and hear that it has water in it, it's good to go. Then the hard part starts about taking the hus off. But uh, we're going to try to find some right now. Empty. Nope. These guys have found a good one. Hey there boys, enjoying the coconut? Well then, my coconut hunt has not gone as planned. Um, the crab population on this island is pretty extreme and as soon as the coconut falls the crabs are onto it and um, getting inside of it. So as soon as they get inside and they break that seal then the coconut's pretty much got a time limit of about two or three days before you have to eat it. I've just spotted a decent reef shark. I think it's a reef shark. It's hiding, it's hanging around the shallows.
morning. Uh, this morning we are in a beautiful little anchorage called... I've got no idea. <laughs> no, we're in an atoll called Makimo. The anchorage I don't think has a name, it's just... Uh, it's like protected by a reef and the prevailing winds uh, are quite protected as well. So we made friends with a dog the other evening um, on a beach. We nicknamed the dog Mikimo. Uh, we're just going in now to say our farewells, leave him some food and some water, and uh, hopefully we can find him. Hello, Makimo. Hello. Hello. So, Makimo actually has some owners. Uh, they come to the island every day, but for some reason, they leave her here overnight. So we had uh, the pleasure of her company the other night of the, during the fire, during a, a little beach fire, and we're just saying our goodbyes. Oh, it's, uh, you could just do that. I'm hurt oh, don't cut it. Yeah. Until it'll wait. Oh yeah, happy days, breakfast is served. So Isabel and myself mainly live off um, a plant-based diet uh, and we've had these cans of tuna on our boat for whew, two years now and they've kind of been a backup. Uh, they were in the grab bag in case we needed them but uh, they're finally getting put to good use this morning. <laughs> Oh, she's loving that. She's looking a little skinny. You're okay, you keep going. Oh, last one. Oh, how good. Is that good stuff? Oh yeah, she's loving that. Oh yeah, can number three. Is that good to see her food full, baby? Here was breakfast there, young darling. Oh, is that delicious? Delicious? Good morning guys, <clears throat> as you can tell I am uh, still a bit sick, we also just woke up so maybe this is my vo morning voice as well, <clears throat> I apologize for that. Um, it's about 6 o'clock right now and we're gonna get going to sail to Fakarava. Um, our friends are just pulling up the anchor now, uh, but upon Karen turning on the engine, or he was supposed to, um, the engine didn't start. <clears throat> 
Um, so the sort of batteries are dead. Um, Kieran just told me then that they're very, very old, so uh, it wasn't a shock for him. But um, yeah, I think he's gonna rewire the um, home batteries to the engine now. And wow, um, this is not my area of expertise. I can I help you in any sort of way? No, it's okay. Do you want to show? Do you want to just wave at us? Hey guys! <laughs> I can't see much because my head torch. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what's happening this morning. We can yeah. fix it? Uh, yeah, I just hope the house batteries are good enough to start the engine. The engine needs what's called cold cranking amps, which are very specific to a starter battery. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure the house batteries have enough cold cranking amps. Yes, I was just about to say this myself, the uh, cold cranking amps. that the alternator is going to charge the house batteries double over but you know it's not it's not a, the worst thing in the world okay so I've pulled these two engine um, battery cables out of the engine and I've fed them into where the house batteries are I've just connected them up to the house batteries uh, fingers crossed uh, the house batteries have enough juice to start the engine I think they will recording Okay, so the cold cranking amps of our house battery. Okay, let me start from the start. Cold cranking amps are the amps needed to start an engine. So for our engine, the house battery has 780 cold cranking amps, or CCA. I have connected the engine onto the house batteries and I was concerned that the cold cranking amps wouldn't be enough. We have two batteries and each battery has 800 cold cranking amps with a combined total of 1600 cold cranking amps I want to say when you combine them um, because they are combined in par parallel so it should be more than enough it should be way 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 more than enough so we're going to start up now and see if it works alright let's do it alright hey all good beautiful Okay, so now we're going to get going. Exiting the chemo, we timed it quite well with an outgoing tide. We pushed around 7 to 10 knots speed over ground out of the path. What was that? Oh, I'm just trying to control the boat when the wash is throwing the boat left and right, left and right. It's, uh, it's a cool, it's a cool challenge. Mr. Kieran Weiss. 
Hello, Miss Isabel Nee. What is happening? Um, right now? No, um, five no. minutes, five minutes ago. Five minutes ago? What is happening five minutes ago? Well, we were putting up the spinnaker five minutes ago and putting up the mainsail five minutes ago. That was ha was happening five minutes ago. Okay. Yes. And uh, this present moment, how do you feel about that? How do I feel about the spinnaker and the mainsail being up? Yes. Very, uh, nostalgic. Oh. Yes. Yes, you see, having these sails up, it brings back some memories from my past. Memories from my childhood. Oh, sweet memories. Nope. Sorry, what? I'm waiting for the applause. You know, like, oh. bravo, bravo. Oh. No? Uh, yeah. Sure, I can put some um, sound effects in there. Sound effects, sound effects? You get good, good. <laughs> so you're feeling uh, very good this morning, or? Uh, this spinnaker, I'm in. I'm in uh, two moods about it. <coughs> it's a lot of work to put up, and on these really light wind days, right now we have about 10, 11 knots from behind of true wind. And I'm a bit half half about it. There's a lot of work to put up, and we are moving, but uh, how much more speed we get with the spinnaker compared to the normal headsail, I think it's fractional. I think it's not much. So I'm a little bit half half about it. Mm. But it's up now and we are moving at five knots, 4.6, five good. knots. And we are heading in the direction we want to go. We are heading to Fakarava. I'll tell you about the sail actually, while I've got you here guys, while you're around. Uh, today we are on a 102 nautical mile sail from Makimo to Fakarava. Uh, Fakarava is <coughs> the atoll in the Tuamotos which has the most kind of reception and is the most populated. So we're hoping to upload a few movies, buy some groceries, get some fresh water um, and then keep going back out to these deserted atolls. Mm. So we have a few other atolls to dodge. Uh, I'll show you that in a map in just a second. And we should be there by tomorrow morning, at which point we have to work out what time to go into the atoll or into the pass. Bakarava's North Pass is quite open and quite easy to get into. We just have to make sure there's not too much current going either way uh, in order to get in there safely. And we're doing it solo this time. Our, our mates are going to Tahanea, right? That's correct, that's correct. Uh, we have, we've been sailing with two boats for the last week and a half, two weeks. And they have decided to go to Tahanea. Um, and we just, we need to get internet. So we have to go to Fakarava uh, to get movies up, to talk to you guys, uh, to talk to our patrons especially. So it's uh, some, some little sacrifices we make for this lifestyle, but we're happy to make them. Mm. Yes, and I am feeling a lot, a lot better today. Uh, there have been two days where I've just basically been horizontal. Uh, Kieran's been doing the cooking and the cleaning and uh, has been out snorkeling and having fun. And I've just been drinking heaps and heaps of water and yeah, just really resting. Um, it really sucks being sick when it's when we're at this beautiful, beautiful anchorage um, and it's super sunny and all our friends are doing a lot of fun stuff. But um, yeah, I have not been sick in I think two years. Uh, it really hit me. Um, yeah, it was just a it's just a normal flu. I'm feeling a lot, a lot better. And yeah, uh, by tomorrow I should be good to go again and being able to edit and all the rest of it for for you guys. So Kieran. Hi. Hey. Can you tell us about your necklace? My necklace. You got a new necklace. Yes. We're having coffee at a nice little restaurant in Nukahiva. And Isabel picked me this out. 
Yeah. I'm not one for jewellery, but well, let's just say you got some good taste. <laughs> the next morning we arrived into Fakuraba with a one to two knot current against us. Quite easy going. Very happy captain.